Good morning, everybody. Hello, hello. I was pausing for no reason. I'm trying out new software this morning, and so it's a little confusing. But my name's Jennifer Cotton, and I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Midlothian, Texas. And that means I teach people how to make greeting cards, scrapbook pages, gift packaging, and more with stamps, ink, paper, and lots of cool tools. So welcome. Thank you for being here. If you're new to this page, thank you very much. And if you're back as a usual watcher, thank you very much. Um, good to see you guys. So hello, Cindy. Thanks for sharing. And good morning. Hey, Janet in rainy North Carolina. Um, Susan, good morning. Hey, Kathy in Minnesota. Good morning. Cin now I forgot who I said hi to. Cin there's two Cindy's on here. Hello to both Cindy's and thanks for sharing. Um, hey, Pat, thanks for sharing. Hey, Janet, thanks for sharing. So um, I have been a Stampin' Up! demonstrator for 20 years now, and I get to teach people, like I said, how to make greeting cards, scrapbook pages, gift packaging, and more. And today I'm going to be making three cards for you with the Words of Cheer bundle. Yay! So this is a bundle that is retiring from Stampin' Up! It will be going away soon while supplies last, and I'm going to make three cards with it today. So exciting. Yay. And as you guys come on to the video, make sure you say hi, make a comment, ask a question, whatever you like to get yourself entered to win these three cards. Um, I also upload the replay to YouTube, and so you can do the same thing over there. You can comment, say hi share, uh, and on both platforms, comment that you shared because they don't tell me who shares. So to get that extra entry for sharing. Um, on YouTube, you can, can um, what's the word I'm looking for? Subscribe and hit the notification bell to get notified when I have videos, but also make sure that you um, comment that you did those as well just so you get those entries. Okay, so thank you very much. I'm a little off today because um, I'm using new uh, uh, software to do this video, and it's sort of a test. We'll see if I continue to use it, but because of that, when I look straight forward, I can't see my face, and I'm used to being able to see it, so it's throwing me off, and my notes are down here. So anyway, if that's why I'm sort of not as smooth as usual with all the stuff I'm saying. But good morning. Hey, Marsha. Thanks for sharing. Hey, Liz. Good morning. Hey, Valley Chick. Good to see you. Um, Margaret shared. Thank you. Hey, Jackie. All right. So I think I'm a little caught up. Hey, Sherry. Hey, Nancy. Good to see you. And Linda. Thanks for sharing. Okay, so I'm going to remind you of my upcoming events. And some other Stampin' Up! things. By the way, today is free shipping. Any order over $50, you pay $0 for shipping. This is a great sale. Stampin' Up! does it very, very rarely. So take advantage. Get that free shipping while you can. And um, how you take advantage of that, you can text or email me in order. Thank you, Marsha. That was so sweet. <laughs> she knows I'm like nervous over here. Um you can text or email me and I can enter it for you, but I will need your credit card info. Or um, you can just go to my store. There'll be links in this video in both platforms and you can order right there. And um, if your order is 50 or more before tax and shipping, you pay $0 shipping. So that's a huge savings. Um, now, I'm going to show you some stuff today that's while supplies last. I also made a video showing what's while supplies last, and I shortened it just to that section, and it's on YouTube. So any questions, just let me know, but you can view that. I also have a blog post with links to all these lists of what is while supplies last. And many of those products are discounted greatly. So you're definitely going to want to check that out and take advantage of the sale today. All right, but upcoming events, um, there's... I've had some people ask me, there's been a little confusion, but I am doing in-person events on in December, December 18th. Card class, scrapbook class, stamp a stack, and sampler. You can come take one 
two, three, or four. There's limited time slots. You have to register for in-person separate from just the class kit and all that stuff. But we are doing it. We're doing our little Christmas party. We'll have some music and treats and a gift for you. You'll also get a gift from me if you take my Christmas class, or they're not Christmas classes, but my December, these four classes to go. So lots of opportunity there. What are these four classes? Um, they're happening in person on December 18th in DeSoto, Texas, and to go, they'll be mailed by December 20th. You can also, um, if you're local, check out the supplies and stamp the projects at home. Check them out for me. And you can also just pick up your class packets and not pay shipping. So lots of options there for these four classes. Let me put up a screen real quick that um, should show you not all of my upcoming events, but some of them. I want you to notice the part in yellow. Every class I offer includes a PDF tutorial, everything possible, cut, die cut, punched, and embossed, um, other than designer paper or kit components. Like if it includes a uh, Memories and More kit, you might cut that down to two inches or whatever. Otherwise, we cut everything, we package it very carefully. Um, all of my events are offered in the United States to go, and some are offered in person. Um, most, you can also just purchase the PDF tutorial. So those monthly classes is that first column on the left, in person, December 18th, to go mail December 20th, register by December 16th for card and scrapbook. They're each $15 free with a $20 order. Register by December 12th for stamp a stack and sampler, which are product-based classes. So you're gonna get $20 in merchandise with each one. And uh, stamp a stack is 30, sampler is 28. And both of those or are also a club that you can join. So let me come back to me. <laughs> um, so, you know, hopefully that maybe answers a couple of questions on that, but those events, um, or for the four I'm talking about right now, that's kind of the quick details. So card class, we're going to use the Plentiful Plants Bundle. It's December 18th, so it's cutting it really close to be making Christmas projects, so that one will be just all occasion cards, and that is a set that I haven't had a chance to do a class with yet. So I think that's going to be a lot of fun. There's great dyes and, and all kinds of stuff, uh, designer paper for us to be able to use. I'm going to check up on these comments. And, um, and then scrapbook is going to be Merriest Moments bundle for two 12 by 12 Christmas pages. And we'll make our first New Year's page using heartfelt wishes. Um, and then we'll make page two of New Year's next month. So any questions on those, let me know. They're $20 or free with a $15 order. And yes, you can take them to go. I saw Robin come on and Betsy, good morning. Hello, everybody. Um, Alejandra's here. Hey, Pat, good morning. Video keeps interrupting. Um, Linda and Linda Hodge, Linda Mansky, good morning. So if anyone else's video is having trouble, could you comment? Um, if not, you might, uh, Linda, want to restart Facebook. I don't know. I don't see any issues on my iPad, but you never know with this kind of stuff. So if anyone wants to comment on that, please feel free. I'm going to see. Um, I'm using new software today, which I don't think is affecting the feed, but you never know. Okay, so I talked about card and scrapbook. Stamp a stack and sampler, like I said, they include product with the fee, so they're a flat fee. Um, sampler is $28, and we're making a really pretty winter sampler using the, thank you, Jackie. Uh, Jean is cutting out. Marsha and Jackie are good. Um, Marsha and Jackie are local, so possibly it could be based on where you live if there's any kind of weather issues or something but I always when I'm watching someone else's Facebook live and I'm having issues on my end watching it I will close Facebook altogether and go back in and most of the time that fixes it so hopefully 
that can help. Um, we're using the Peaceful Place Designer Paper in the sampler class to make a winter sampler. Kathy is good. Thank you, Kathy. So it sounds like it's hit and miss who's having trouble and who's not, unfortunately. Love technology. Um, and then the Mary Snowflakes bundle. So unfortunately as well, the dies sold out, but don't worry, we will pre-die cut everything possible for you. You'll just stamp and assemble, and I'm sure you can substitute any snowflake stamps you like as well to make this awesome winter sampler. So $28, register by December 12th, December 12th for sampler. And I have all the links out already. Sign up for my email newsletter if you need those links, or just message me and say, hey, where's the link? Um, and then stamp a stack is 12 cards for $30 and you get $20 in merchandise. It's a great deal. Like I said, I'm going to put this screen back up real quick. Uh, as you see at the top, we cut, die cut, punch, emboss, everything possible for you. You just cut your designer paper. Um, you get a PDF tutorial and like I said, sampler, I mean, stamp a stack is going to make 12 Cards. Four designs, three of each. And we're using this gorgeous artistically inked um, bundle to make those four cards. Okay, four designs, 12 cards. So those are the monthly classes. I do those every single month. You can join Sampler and Stamp Stack Club also instead of taking it all apart here and there. You'll be guaranteed you'll get the class every month. You don't have to remember to register. If you register with shipping, it's going to ship to you automatically, all that stuff. Um, and after six consecutive months of being in club, you get to get $25 in free merchandise. But you can take those a la carte. Some of my club members, like for Stampa Stack, will add on sampler whenever they like and vice versa as well. So lots of options with those classes. Okay, next up is the new catalog kickoff. So let me put this graphic back up for new catalog kickoff. Um, you register by January 2nd. You can attend in person on January 8th or I will mail it to you by January 11th and that is a date change. I had something come up on the 10th so I'll mail by January 11th. We're going to use four stamp sets which by the way I'm doing a video tomorrow showing all of my new product. All of it. It is a lot. Um, so I'll be live at 9 a.m. Central right here in this Facebook page, and you'll get to see these products I'm talking about right now. But the kickoff is going to use, um, I'm going to switch back because that's probably boring to look at that screen, Crane of Fortune Slim Sayings, that is a slim line stamp set and die set, Happy Hedgehogs and Catching Butterflies. So you can take it in person. If you're local um, on January 8th or you can take it to go I'll mail it to you with all the stuff I've said multiple times today about my classes that are to go and um, yeah so that's pretty much the quick version you're gonna be entered into door prize you're gonna get product with your fee um, there's an optional card swap you can do in person or to go lots of, of perks there with this new catalog kickoff so any questions, just let me know. And then retreats are coming up. They are in person. They will be offered to go as well. So info on that will come out closer to the dates. The first to go will be in March, um, but there's no room for in person to attend. But we have May and August in person that you can attend a live retreat where you can work on anything you want, scrapbooking, card making, quilting, sewing, <laughs> uh, reading a book, whatever it is you like. That's in Temple, Texas. Um, so May 12th through 15th or August 11th through 14th, we do still have spots available. And then my coming soon events, I think I'm going to go back to this graphic because I honestly don't remember. Oh, no, that's about retreat. Okay, so um, I didn't make a graphic, but our designer paper share and ribbon share is coming. The I'm just waiting on my partner to get all her links set up and then we will both release them to our customers at the same time. But we've worked out all of our details. We have our designer paper share coming in January. 
um, register by January 12th and your kits are ready or mailed by January 17th. This is all of the new papers and ribbons from our new catalog coming out January 4th. Yes. So you will get a sampling of all of these. Hello, everybody. See, I can't see comments now here. I have to look to my left, so I'm going to have to catch up on the comments. Usually I can see as people scroll on, but this new thing I'm using. Um, so this is a way to get a sampling of all eight new designer papers and three new specialty papers. We're giving you six by 12 inches or six by six or four by six, depending on how it's sold. But we cut ours into six by 12 versus six by six. So that's a perk for you. You get at least one of each design, but in many cases, multiple um, sheets of each design. Hey, Tammy. And um, hey, Shirley. And who's that? Shannon. Hello. So you can just take the paper share. You can only take the ribbon share. You can take both, but you can add on the party and then your packet will include eight make and takes, PDF tutorial, video instruction, Facebook group with videos for every card. Okay, Linda, I hope it works this time. Um, as well as um, bonus videos, door prizes, a bonus gift if you take the party, so the party's only $20 extra. So let me throw out your prices real quick. This is without shipping. You just choose the shipping option when you register if you want that. Paper share is um, $40. Again, add 20 for the party. Ribbon share is $20. You'll get two and a half yards of every ribbon in the catalog, every new ribbon, excluding um, twine because that just turns into a knot basically when we divide that up <laughs> and um, so that's it 40 and 20 add on the party for another 20 add shipping if needed you only pay that one time we are using Dahlia Days and celebrating you stamp sets for those um, projects that we'll be making and any questions just let me know so there's eight new papers, three new specialty papers, um, seven new ribbons, that's 17 and a half yards of ribbon. It's awesome. So links will be coming out soon. That is all my upcoming. Also, I have an upcoming stamp camp with Genevieve for spring you, from the new catalog and details and links will come out for that soon. But the event is February 26th on Facebook. By the way, these Facebook events are recorded, so you do not have to be in person. The, I don't think I said, the paper share happens on January 22nd. And you want to register by, I put the, that was actually the wrong paper, um, January 12th. And then on the 22nd, we'll do our Facebook party. Okay. Um, what else? One more thing. Oh, retreat in a box. I said that already. is coming soon. The, the actual registration link. Okay, next up, Cruise Ultimate Retreat. So first of all, you can join us on a real cruise in January, 2022. It's January 30th. And um, I feel like my dates are not here. Oh, there it is. January 30th through February 6, 2022, Western Caribbean out of Galveston, Texas on Royal Caribbean's Liberty of the Seas. And so you can register for that now still just until the ship runs out of space or April and my um, deadline come up for us to have to order your supplies and gifts. Lots of gifts, lots of stuff. Um, but if you cannot attend the cruise, you can take it to go. It's the ultimate retreat in a box. It's going to include six classes, multiple projects, travel album, 10 cards. Let me throw this graphic up. Um, sampler class with two samplers, Valentine class, cards and treats, fun folds class, another class. We're going to use the Hello Beautiful bundle, which, uh, not that one. We're going to use the Hello Beautiful bundle, the Artfully Layered bundle, and the Sweet Conversations bundle. Plus, you're going to get free with your class the Friendly Hello stamp set and designer paper from Celebration. You're going to get your PDF, your gifts, your bag. It is amazing and totally worth it. It's um, 
Our normal retreats are about $100 to go. And this one is, I'm looking for it, but I believe it's $205. I don't know if I put it on here. Yeah, $205. So, and you can do tutorials only. Um, so you're going to want to sign up for that. We have the links out already. Check my customer emails. Ask me to join them. Ask me for the links. Or join the Simply Spoiled Retreats Facebook page. <sighs> okay, almost done. <laughs> D Daffodil Daydream Card Class with Games. Registration is open for this as well. Again, the link went out in my email newsletter. Um, this is Thursday, March 10th at 6.30 Central, and you can take, or you will be able to participate in a Zoom event where we play games to win prizes. You will also be able to um, make the projects along with us on that Zoom if you choose using Daffodil Daydream Bundle, and you can play bingo games for a chance to win hundreds of dollars in prizes, so lots of perks there. Um, I want to try to catch up a little bit. I forgot to even say at the beginning of this video that the reason I'm live today instead of tomorrow on Thursday is because Stampin' Up! announced free shipping today. And so I, I had already planned tomorrow to show all my new product. I see now my video froze. <laughs> it froze on me, Linda. Um, tomorrow... I had already planned to show you all my new product because it's so exciting and any demonstrator can order that stuff now and anyone can get our starter kit. But then they announced free shipping. So I was like, I really need to do two lives this week and I don't want to make tomorrow's be a four hour Facebook live. So that's why I'm live today instead of normally on Thursdays at 9 a.m. Central. Okay, so I know I'm, I'm a... Uh, behind here, although I scrolled way, way too far back. Hold on. <laughs> um, Elizabeth in Georgia. Hello. Hey, Mary Seb Sebastiano. Is that how you say your last name? Kathy. Hello, Jean. Um, a couple of y'all are did say you're cutting or the video's cutting out on you. So hopefully it's working it's like smoothed itself out. I don't know. Um, good morning, Laura. Hello. Okay, so um, I talked about Daffodil Daydream. I didn't give you dates. It's March 10th. You want to register by February 27th. So that link is out there. Any questions, just let me know. And then December Paper Pumpkin, Stampin' Up! put out, I'm trying to see where to put this, um, a new little like promotional wording. Not promotional, like it was literally geared towards demonstrators. Um, so they're promoting it to us. It says, you'll go bananas over the lots of pun paper pumpkin kit. Here's the sneak peek. Don't delay. Only, it says four days. Um, it's only two days left to subscribe. Craft a chuckle and a laugh with this clever kit. This month's kit includes an all occasion stamp set. You can use to create all occasion cards. Not only is this stamp set versatile, it's a builder stamp set. This means the stamp set's images can be mixed and matched to build a variety of characters with different looks and features. So, we have to guess at what those features are, but I would guess maybe glasses, maybe faces, maybe mustaches, and I don't know what else, but it sounds super cute. So, how to get that is to... Red register or what's the word subscribe i do see the video being choppy linda <laughs> um hey sandy good morning to subscribe by the 10th december 10th the 10th is the deadline of each month and once you subscribe you're going to get a box mailed to you each month until you cancel or put it on hold for 22 dollars free shipping um this is the one from november with a stamp set inside that's exclusive that cannot be purchased anywhere else. Oh my goodness, why can't I open that? That was weird. Um, so you can't purchase the stamp set anywhere else. With, um, of course, adhesive, whatever you need. So this kit actually needed tear and tape, but also always dimensionals, almost always, or glue dots or both. Accessories to make your projects and then all the pieces plus your ink so this is really an all-inclusive kit. You can get it for 
any of your friends and family and relatives and whoever who are not crafters because it's all inclusive. And they, they will be able to make some really cute projects in December. Um, so you can go to the link, which will be in the video on both videos. <laughs> this video is choppy. Uh, Y'all don't know all of the links Scott and I have gone to to set up this software. <laughs> but I'm plugged directly into the modem or whatever it's called instead of using Wi-Fi. There's like a 50 foot cord going from this room to the living room and then many, many other test runs we've done. So I don't know if the choppiness is because of the software or not, but we will continue to test it. Um, but it gives me the ability to, to give these different um, screens. I'll just flash that one on there real quick and like this screen and then of course my desk view. So hopefully it's gonna work out. But, of course, technology is very annoying and frustrating. <laughs> okay, so paper pumpkin, you can also do what they call a pre-purchase, where you don't want to subscribe, but you want to get one month worth, three months, six months, or 12 months. You get a small discount when you buy the multiple months. And those get free shipping today. So if you go to my online store and add a one, six, 12, a one, three, six, or 12 month subscription to your cart and your cart is total 50 or more, you're gonna get free shipping on that paper pumpkin. Um, but anyway, you can always pre-purchase as well. And so that will, either way, you want to purchase or subscribe by the 10th to get this month's kit. Any questions, let me know, but I'll put the links to the subscription in this video. And of course there's shopping links as well. Don't forget, today is free shipping, free shipping. Um, I think I'm good to go ahead and flip you down. So with a put, put, click of a button, punch of a button, whatever, um, I'm going to point you down and thank goodness take you off my face. <laughs> and um, I've got some stuff here on the screen, uh, on the desk for you to show you. Um, so along with the free shipping today, every month, I have an online ordering special. And so I have the info here on the screen down in the left-hand corner about my um, so Nancy says it's too choppy. Um, is anyone else having that issue? Um, I have the info on the screen about my host code ED7UN blah blah blah. And then I also have just my websites at the top there. So what that's telling you about that host code is when you order online with me each month, I release a host code and that gives you um, a free gift from me. So $25 or more is going to get you a free class packet to make four cards. So I made these on last week's video. Let me clear the screen for a second so you can see it better. Um, the, you'll get the class packet to make these four cards. And again, I showed them on last week's video so you can see exactly how to make them, the full instructions, with the Shaded Summer stamp set. Is it called Shaded? Yes. Um, on page 75 of the annual catalog. Now, um, to get those, you place a $25 online order with the monthly host code, which right now is right here in the corner. Um, it's also in my emails, on my blog, all that stuff. Now, today, or well, all through the first half of the month, if your order is 50 or more, you also get a free full roll of crinkled seam binding. But today, if your order is 50 or more, you get both of those plus free shipping. And then I will also have a host code special, a different code in starting on December 16th to get um, free rhinestones. Anyway, but also this month only, if you place an online order of $150 or more, in addition to the class packet and the accessory, I will give you the shaded, uh, the summer shadows dies for free. I showed them on the last video. They are the dies that cut out all of the floral images as well as 
the images as well as these die cut flowers and leaves that you see here on these cards. That will be absolutely free. They're no longer available. They were available during celebration. So hopefully that all made sense. I feel like I'm not being very clear today, <laughs> but hopefully that makes sense. Basically place an online order of 25 or more with that host code, get this class packet mailed to you free. You'll stamp and assemble it at home. It gets mailed in January. Um, if it's 50 or more, you'll get the accessory as well and free shipping today. And then if it's 150, by the way, don't use the host code. You'll double up. You'll get all the gifts from me, the free dies, plus host benefits from Stampin' Up, which is at least $15 in free merchandise. This little paper here, which I just realized I can make a graphic for now to put on the screen, if this works, um, shows you where to put in the host code. So when you're checking out, when you go to the cart and you see checkout, look above order summary and the words add host code. And that's what you want to click on and then pop in that code. Um, so any questions, let me know. And that's under 150. Okay, real quick. I said I was going to show this like five times on last week's video and then I forgot five times. Um, but when I made this gift card holder on last week's video, super cute, or you can put a note in there or whatever. Um, the reason I made that card was I was going through some old cards, sorting them recently, and I found this one. It's an old card, retired stamp set, but I was like, oh, that was such an easy, quick and easy gift card holder. I'm going to repeat that on my video this week, basically. Um, so that's where I got that template from. I kept saying I was going to show you all that last week, and I kept forgetting. So there you go. I showed it. And I also have a couple of cards to brag about receiving Christmas cards in the mail. This one is from Terry, one of my team members and customer friends. Um, so very cute. And then this one is from uh, Mary Ann. And But I wanted to show y'all that she mailed it to me in a clear envelope, which y'all know. You may not know, but that's like my favorite way to mail stuff. So let me turn it over and cover up our addresses, but you can see how it went through the mail. So she put her stamp up here. Now they canceled it in the wrong spot below my fingers. <laughs> so they didn't really cancel the stamp, but normally they would. But you put it in the envelope. You put the to and from address info on the back. Now she wrote it directly on the card. I don't want to flip that over. Isn't that a cute card, by the way? It's embossed. It's stamped and then embossed. So double. Um, and then she slipped it in the clear envelope. She put her return address sticker on the back of the, I mean, on the clear envelope. And of course, you always put your stamp on the outside so they can cancel it. Um, you could also put address labels on the clear envelope on the outside who you're mailing it to instead of writing on it or slip a piece of paper in there. But anyway, thank you, Marianne and Terry for the cards. Super cute. And I just love getting that clear envelope um, mailing. And then I wanted to share some other samples before we start our stamping um, that I've received recently. Also, I want to give you guys a, that quick reminder that if you will comment on this video, you'll be entered to win the cards from today. And also, if you um, share the video, just comment that you shared on Facebook and YouTube. Um, the comments and everything count. Okay, so these are some projects from recent events. Um, these are our team meeting make and takes. So every month, my team has the opportunity to take advantage of some projects, but it's optional. They don't have to. They're discounted, you know, from what a customer would pay. Um, so this month, we made them using a new celebration product. This is actually the product that will be included with that retreat that um, mega cruise retreat, but anyway. Um, so hopefully you think these are cute. So we made those four. And then we, I'm trying to remember. Oh, these are cards I received at our team Christmas party, which is where we made those projects. Um, it was this past weekend. And so I got these cards from different friends at the party. This was from Pat. It's using that same new product. Very going to be popular, I'm sure. Um, and look, you have my love and support. Isn't that so pretty? She um, did not write inside the card. She just used a sticky note so that I could reuse it. And then I got a Christmas.
Christmas card from Mary Ann. Same thing. She used a sticky note, but isn't that adorable? Look at that using these large opal rounds as snowballs, like the little snowmen. I mean, polar bears juggling snowballs. Um, this is from a new team, team member, Sarah, and it's my favorite fall. That's probably why she gave it to me. <laughs> Um, so thank you, Sarah. And then this one is from a team member and friend customer, um, Vivi. So she had to actually give me instructions on this. She has, yeah, she wrote a note because again, all of us card makers are like, you're going to want to reuse this card. Thank you, Debbie. Refresh the page. It stopped on my end. Perfect. Um, so she, now don't ask me for instructions on how to make this, but you pull both sides of these papers here and it pops out. Isn't that cute? So, thank you, Bibby. All right, so I received those, and then these were our team card swaps. So, that's another perk of being in the team is you can choose. We have, you know, close to 200 people in our team. This is how many swapped, so you obviously don't have to, but um, a lot of them use new product. Isn't it gorgeous? <laughs> Look at this rainbow. Oh my gosh, this card is so good. So many layers, so many, I mean layers, like layer on layer on layer. She used the new, the new, actually I think these are all the dies from the rainbow stuff. We have a, a cloud punch now too, but these are dies. Anyway, um, another rainbow one. That was Betsy. I don't know if I know who all made these. Yes, this is Shannon. She used our current ombre uh, glitter paper with the new rainbow stuff and check out these butterflies they're new oh y'all can get it early if you're a demonstrator i think dorothy yep made this one so cute so she used new product but with that i forgot what this is called now i'm blanking out um so she mixed and matched current and not current um the spin the wheel card Ooh, i forgot what it's called i did a whole video on it Check out this one. This was actually our winner. So that's a new stamp set. You open it and then look at this diagonal cut with a die, um, border die that we carry for that opening. Is that not gorgeous? Yes, it is. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, that was our winner by Linda. This one, oh, I don't have a name on it, which could be my fault. I could have lost it, but this is gorgeous. This is new celebration paper and new dies, the new little brass butterflies, and then it has a pocket on the inside and the lid though. So very cool. Um, this one was from Robin. Gorgeous. She's got heat embossing. That's that same new Hello Friend um, bundle from Celebration. Heat embossed on the inside. I mean, that's top notch. The tearing, like, I love it. Um, this one is from Kim. Everybody loves the brass butterflies. <laughs> Y'all see them on there. They're so pretty. And that's new product as well. Um, and then Nina made a baby card. She is still a sort of new grandma, so I'm sure that's why. <laughs> but isn't that adorable? That's in our annual catalog, this baby set. And then uh, Ramona made just a nice birthday card. Still lots of layers and all that, but... You could put that together pretty simple. Nice birthday card. Um, and then we always do a handmade gift exchange, and we do it like a white elephant trading thing. So, um, you know, you may end up with what you want, and you may not, but this is the gift I ended up with. I love it. It uses new product up mixed with the cotton paper from the Ever Eden stuff that that cotton paper is while supplies last. Isn't this gorgeous? This is a very nice frame. It's very heavy and sturdy. And um, that's a new ribbon, new designer papers. I just loved it. It was so gorgeous. That's the best word for it. Um, so, all right. We are going to stamp now with some words of cheer. <sighs> Finally, right? Um, so this stamp set and bundle or dies is one of the many that is about to retire from our holiday catalog. Um, let me see if I wrote down the page number. Page 20. So these dies are only $17.50 and they're awesome. You'll see when I show you. 
Let me go to page 20. I did the whole video, like I said, where I went over everything in this book. But um, Words of Cheer, this has been one of my favorites since this book came out. And it's, of course, a stamp set with lots of greetings. I guess that's why it's called Words of Cheer. Because there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different greetings. And some you can mix and match to make one phrase. A nice big floral image that has poinsettias, holly leaves, berries, and sprigs. A holly leaf stamp, a solid and an outline. A solid um, poinsettia that you can stamp on top of these, which I'm not using today, but I have a sample I can show you. And then a three dot one for berries. So great stamp set there. And then these dies are like, I knew I was getting these dies when I saw this book months ago because it has big word dies mixed in with it. It is, um, does it say the number here? No. But I will uh, tell you from here how many dies it is. Twelve. It's one of those where there's two sheets. And so you have the word happy, and it's two dies, so you can layer them on top of each other. You'll see these actually cut out in my samples. Um, and then cheer, same thing, two dies. You can layer them on top of each other. I know I used these on the dies on a recent card on Facebook Live, but I didn't do the whole bundle. Um, but I'm trying to, oh, I think it said happy. It was one of the gift card holders. Um, but I'm using both of those today, as well as there's like just little stars and sprigs that you can just die cut out that stand alone. Plus there's the die that cuts out the large floral image and the holly leaves. And then there's one die that just cuts out a bunch of small, very small, like uh, of what's the eighth of an inch dots, a whole bunch of them. So you could either make a border as with the holes in it or use those dots for your berries. Anyway, but this, this die here, um, it die cuts out three little stems with holly leaves on it and embosses. So I'm going to use that on one of the cards so you'll see that today. Okay, there's the product. While supplies last, get these dies for only $17.50. So in this case, don't get the bundle. If you want both, you type in these codes individually and it will be a total. I had a sticky note. It's like 34, I believe. Sticky note disappeared, of course. Um, it's $17.50 plus $17 for both versus the bundle. I feel like I just saw that sticky note while I was talking. Um, but let me go to page 20. The bundle is $46.75. So huge savings there. And there's lots of stuff like that in this book that you're going to save that way. Okay. So this first card, I have my basic white card base. It's five and a half by eight and a half. It's an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper cut in half. That's going to fit into the same, you know, normal envelopes like the cards I showed you that everyone mailed me. And then our next layer is Blushing Bride. So let me go ahead and fold this card base in half. I want to use my bone folder to get a nice crisp fold. I'm going to align the two corners on the table and then press really firmly with my bone folder. And uh, I'm just seeing y'all's comment. Love the daffodils card. Agree. Julie, no problem. See you later. Hey, Catherine. All right. Audio keeps repeating like a loop. Oh, Jerry, I'm having so many problems. One issue, just as a side note, um, on testing is we have to test it in groups unless I just want to go live and be like, I'm testing this, you know, where the whole world can see it. And I don't know if groups are different than pages in Facebook as far as the audio and all that, because we've done multiple real-time tests and not had any audio or glitching issues. So I don't know what's going on. But of course, when you're really live, it's going to mess up. So I folded that in half with the bone folder so that my crease on the inside won't be as wrinkly as if I just used my finger. And then once that's folded, the front will be four inches by five and a fourth, this blushing bride, to give me that nice uh, like quarter inch border all the way around, or eighth inch border, I should say. 
Now, the Blushing Bride has been embossed with the Wintry embossing folder, which I think they're either low inventory or temporarily not available, but they're coming back. Don't worry, they're coming back. Um, but my folder is with Karen right now. She's doing something for me with that, so I don't have the folder here to show you, but hopefully you can see it's snowflakes, and it comes actually with two folders. They're the three and a half inch wide ones, and the other one is gorgeous, um, like pine tree sprigs. It looks like sprigs from a Christmas tree. Okay, so that's been pretty embossed. Now I have a strip of our gold brushed metallic cardstock. So let me grab that. It is this product, I believe it's in our holiday catalog and I believe it's carrying over, which means you'll still be able to get it as soon as this catalog ends. So the one pack comes with bronze, gold, and copper. It's gorgeous. It's brushed, meaning you can kind of see like if something was dragged across it and it makes little lines. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but um, within the gold, and this is the gold color, by the way, of the three. For my card, it's gold. So that strip is one inch by five. I'm gonna make sure, yes. And that is to put this cheer that I die cut out on. So I pre die cut cheer from, I wanted to do pink and brown basically for this card. So cheer, I die cut from our cork specialty paper, which is retiring and it's while supplies last. You wanna get as many, much of this as you can because it's so awesome. So this is the, the larger cheer die that would be the background. Now it could stand alone, but it's the larger one. And then, I meant to say this when I was showing the dies, the smaller cheer that can fit on top of it, layer on top of it, they're actually individual letters. The other one, they're all connected as one piece, but these are individual. So any words you can spell out of C-H-E-E-R, you can use this alphabet for, which don't ask me to do the words, but if there's anything you can spell out of that, you can. They come out individually. Now, I added some of our adhesive sheets to the back of this Blushing Bride cardstock and then cut out the word cheer. They're really skinny. They're not like tiny letters, but they're very skinny. They're a they're like two, four, five eighths inch tall by a little less than half an inch wide, but they're skinny. So they're gonna be a challenge to add adhesive to. So if you use your adhesive sheets before you die cut, then you can just peel the protective coating off the back and it will be pretty easy to stick the small cheer to the large cheer. So I'll do that real quick. And then, um, I'm trying to remember, I think those are actually all the pieces for this card. Besides, I'm going to add some ribbon and an embellishment. So I'll tell you about those when I add them. But as far as the pieces that I'm using, this is it. And I maybe should have pre-started the peeling to save you guys a minute here. But anyway, I just love word dyes. So you have cheer and happy. The happy is a lot thicker, like fatter, I guess. And definitely um, they're both all connected on happy so they can stand alone. More so the top one. The bottom one has little images on it like this one, like sprigs sticking out of it. Um, so the happy one you can definitely use and combine with the word birthday or any other word you want to put with it. Okay, so I stuck small cheer to large cheer. And now I'm gonna grab my silicone craft sheet. So I have to put that down because I need two hands. Um, I'm gonna grab that and add adhesive to the back of the cork. Now I could have cut that with the adhesive sheets, but it's thick enough for me that I didn't wanna bother with that. So I'm using my stamp and seal and I'm just going to use a silicone sheet so I don't get adhesive all over my table or my scratch paper. 
And hey, Sarah, good morning. I showed your card earlier, Sarah. And hey, Martha, good to see you. Thanks for sharing. Um, oh, hey, Susie. Thanks for sharing as well. Everyone who just came on, let me know how your feed is. We've been having issues. Janet refreshed and went out and came back in and fixed it. So if anyone's having issues. Um, okay, so silicone sheet protects my table or scratch paper from getting an excess adhesive because this is skinny. But I don't need to cover the whole thing with adhesive. So hopefully you can tell I'm just putting pieces of adhesive on some of the fatter sections of my paper. And by the way, for my um, vision impaired customers and friends, I forgot to say that cheer is vertical. Yes, so it's up and down. Um, obviously the single letters you could put any way you want, but the, the one that's all connected is vertical. So I'm placing this on the one inch by five gold metallic paper vertically. And this is going to be a portrait style card. So I glued sheer to the gold metallic. And then I have the blushing bride front. And by the way, if you cannot see it, I told you this is a three and a half inch wide embossing folder. So the left half is not embossed. So we're going to just position sheer almost all the way to the left, not quite. And that will cover up all of that. So before I attach cheer, I want to tie my gold shimmer ribbon. That's what it's called. And I believe that one's retiring, but I did not write it down. So I'm going to check for you real quick. I could be wrong. Um, uh, where are you? Page. Oh, I think it's not. Page 45. It's a holiday carryover. So as a reminder, this ribbon will retire or it'll be gone when this book goes away, January 3rd, 4th. And then it'll be back in next year's Christmas book. So if you want it now, you need to order it before this book goes away. I just bumped my microphone, so I don't know what that did. Okay, so I'm going to tie this ribbon all the way around toward the bottom of the card. Remember, it's portrait with the bow with a bow to the right. So for this bow, I'm going to use my reverse tweezers. So what you do is you get your ribbon to the plus sign point with one hand and you grab these reverse tweezers. Mine are, or the ones I'm using are on from Amazon and I have and Amazon links. There's a, you see my website there, stamptherapist.com. There's a section at the top that says Amazon links, and you can click on that and see these exact tweezers. But you just pinch it, and now your hands are free to tie your bow. So I'm actually going to flip this card upside down to tie the bow. And if I get interrupted, everything's not ruined. I don't have to completely start over. And then just remove the tweezers once you kind of get it tied tight enough and then you can fix your bow of course but turning the project upside down makes it so that the bow comes out right side up on your project for these type of bows okay so there we go and then cheer is going to go to the left on stamp and dimensionals but i want to look and see i want this bow a little higher more up into the last e and I can just slide that up and down. And now I will add Stampin' Dimensionals. I'm going to use mini Stampin' Dimensionals because they're my favorite. And I will add six. So two, two, and two. And then this, like I said, will go on the left. It will be um, not all the way to the left. I cut it five inches and this is five and a fourth. So I can have that eighth of an inch border on the three sides here over there on the left and actually I think I'm going to slide this bow a little more not so far to the right edge okay so now I can place this blushing bride on my card base <laughs> Kathy said, just notice that my bracelet, or my bracelet, 
I have one of those and never wear it. I'll have to take it out. That's funny, Kathy, because someone on a recent video commented on it as well. And I was saying, this is my old Stampin' Up! team bracelet. They don't, you can still find Italian charms, but not, it's not very easy. Um, but we used to get these at all of the events we went to, incentive trips, etc. There's the Alamo. We had like a thing in San Antonio. Some of mine have fallen off because it's so old. There's ones from like um, conventions and stuff. But anyway, yeah, this is my Stampin' Up! And this one's broken, but I still wear it. Um, Italian charm bracelet. Okay, last but not least, um, I threw these on at the last second after I made this card. But I was like, oh, those gold gilded gems would look so good on this card. So I'll just use my, oops, take your pick tool. Um, it has the putty end, which you could use the pointy end, or you can flip that around to the paddle end. And all three of those work for your sticky embellishments, but I like the pointy, the paper piercer. And I'm going to grab a medium-sized gilded gem for this larger snowflake that's embossed here, and then a couple of the small ones for the a couple of smaller snowflakes on the Blushing Bride. And that is the finished first card. I hope you like it. I like the color scheme, which I picked up from the Whimsy and Wonder designer paper, which I I uh, can't remember now if it's sold out and not coming back or it is coming back. <laughs> I think it's temporarily not available though, but um, it might be gone. I don't know. I can't remember. But that is the color scheme, one of the color schemes from it, like pink and brown. So there we go. I hope you guys like that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Kathy. There's my original. I think I'm going to try. Uh, I'm going to put the camera a little lower so it can be a little closer. We'll see if that's okay. Um, so let me throw these back in here. Uh, as a reminder, you can comment on this video on YouTube or Facebook to be entered to win the three cards I'm going to make today. And also, of course, if you share the video on either platform, just comment that you did that so I'll know to enter you again. Okay, so there's our first one. I don't know which bow looks better. This one's kind of bigger, but this one's more neat and orderly, so <laughs> I don't know. Okay, next up is the, or is another card, <laughs> so here we go. Um, for this card, I have a real red card base. Let me go ahead and fold it. This is like a different kind of fold card. So let me go ahead and fold it and do this little cut and then we can continue on. So for this card, it's a normal size five and a half by eight and a half real red. Fold it in half with your bone folder. And then I'm just going to cut a portion of the front off and I'm cutting off, I'm going to make sure, two inches. Yeah, I'm just going to cut two inches off the front bottom. So let me grab my paper trimmer. So you could score, like pre-cut it to a shorter size and score it, but I'm lazier, plus I'm going to use this piece I cut off. So I'm just going to fold it in half with my bone folder and then cut off two inches from the front. Okay. I did a card just like this in my Words of Cheer class that I offered, just like this cut, but I... I'm changing the colors and papers here. Um, so this red piece we are going to use to die cut out the larger happy image, the one that goes in the back. And I'll still have a good chunk of real red left over there for something else. Okay, so I'll do that in a minute. And then I have a piece of basic white that's four by five and a fourth to go inside the card. So this is gonna be the front, it's landscape. And so the bottom half of this white is just gonna be exposed. And that's just how I made this card, how I wanted it to be. You can grease your fold a little more with the bone folder so it'll stay down. Um, so there's that. And then I have a piece of designer paper to go on the top flap. So this is, the designer paper is two by five and a fourth. 
and the design is called Heartwarming Hugs. This is a pear pizzazz piece that has little mossy meadow white and real red images on it. But the main part is pear pizzazz, which is a light green. Um, so that'll go on the top flap. I have pre-die cut Happy, the smaller Happy, to layer on top of the red from that same brushed metallic gold cardstock with my sticker sheet. That's why it kind of stayed together like this, but when I'm ready, I'm just going to poke it out, punch out any parts from Happy that didn't fall out, and then I will peel and stick this onto the real red Happy. So that's my leftover piece there that does have the sticker sheet on it, as you can kind of see. Always cut your sticker sheets a little smaller than whatever you're placing it on to die cut so that the sticky doesn't go over the edges and stick to your die cutting machine. Okay, then I have, oh, pre-stamped it, a scrap of white and then a scrap of, gar of sorry, pear pizzazz, which is where I'm going to die cut those cute little holly leaves I told you about from, which I've already done, but I can run it through at the same time as this. Again, just for reinforcement of how awesome this guy is. Okay, now I um, think I'll do my stamping before I die cut. So on the inside part, um, from Words of Cheer, I'm going to stamp holidays down the right-hand side multiple times. So if you took this class, you'll recognize this part of the design. <laughs> um, so it's going to say Happy Holidays, right? There's also um, Day. So it could say happy day. We could just change the theme completely. And then in this stamp set, we also have these stamps. This is fully what they say. Happy wishes to you and yours. Holidays. Christmas. Wishing you a joyful Christmas. Happy. Happy Christmas from my home to yours. I like that from my home. Because I have heard that some people don't like our home. That's good. I just put that together from my home to yours, um, day, and then sending you Christmas cheer. So lots of greetings to choose from, but we're going to use holidays. And then we're also going to stamp the holly leaf image. So it's, you can use it separate or together, but it's two stamps, one with two holly leaves kind of connected, and then a solid single holly leaf image that you can stamp on top of those if you like. And I believe you can also stamp this, yes, on top of the holly leaves in the large floral image there. So they just give us one. It kind of is a one-size-fits-all there. I'm using Pear Pizzazz ink for both of these images. So holidays... It's going to be on the right side of this landscape, basic white, and I want it to go all the way down the side. Now, I'm not a perfectionist, but I'm going to start at the bottom because I want it that one to land down there in the bottom corner, and then I'll just go up. I'm just going to do my best to keep it um, straight. You could use your Stamparatus if you were more picky about that. Uh, Susan, that embossing folder for sure is coming back, the um, Wintry, because it's in our annual catalog. So it's just temporarily, you know, they're restocking it. They're waiting on it to come from China. <laughs> um, but it's definitely coming back because it's not in the holiday catalog. <clears throat> this is, <clears throat> I choked myself, a photopolymer stamp set. So that's how I can just keep stamping. <clears throat> I'm re-inking every time, and that's how I can just keep stamping holidays all the way to the top in Pear Pizzazz. But if it were not photopolymer, I'd probably just use my Stamparatus for sure. Or if I was more, were more picky about how straight it is, I would use that. I may have to get a drink of water. <coughs> I can actually mute myself now. <laughs> even though I'm having other issues if I'm really start coughing I forgot okay so for the leaves I'm going to do this outlines image in full strength pear pizzazz 
and then for the solid one to go right on top, I'll ink up in pear pizzazz, fully stamp off on scratch paper, and then stamp that onto my project and repeat. You have to give a full stamping off, like the entire image gets stamped instead of like a quick, let's see where I missed a portion because I just tapped it super fast. That's going to be darker because that ink is still on here if I stamped it onto my project. So if you want it to be even, fully stamp off. And of course, use your silicone craft sheet. I mean, not your silicone. Use your stamp and pierce and emboss mat under your cardstock for photopolymer if you don't have a very firm, hard table surface. Okay, so now for our die cutting. I have actually three things to die cut out. So I will grab my stamp and cut and emboss machine and this other die. The two holly leaves. Check these comments here. <laughs> you would never attempt to. <laughs> Janet, that's hilarious. Um, I am not like an amazing stamper. It's just certain things. This is probably true for everyone. Certain things are easier for me than others. And then there's things other people do where I'm like, how in the world do you do that? Like, I don't get it. So I think we all just have our things we can do. But man, there's been some times with like some two-step stamps or something that I cannot align that stuff and I get so frustrated. So, <laughs> but thank y'all for the compliments. Okay, so I have my Stampin' Cut and Boss machine. It's only $120 free shipping today. That saves you 12 bucks right there. Legitimate good savings. Um, it comes with everything you need to be able to use it right out of the box with every die cutting thing, stamping up sales and embossing. It's 120. You can get it with our starter kit as well for only $99 free shipping. Um, of course, I've aligned the stamped holly leaves die with the stamped image. The other two are not stamped, so I just set the dies on the paper. You can also, you may also notice that my um, cutting pad is cracked. It should be fine. They are consumable and mine has been used thousands of times. I'm turning this a little slower than normal just with the arm crank here on the side because um, of the camera. We don't want it to shake too much. But even when they crack, you can usually still use them for quite a while. Let's make sure it did cut everywhere. Yeah, it still put all that pressure on there. Um, so we're good. But these plates are so old, mine are, as you can tell from all the cutting on the bottom one. So anyway, die cut machine, awesome. You definitely want it. So look at that die. It cuts out three of the same image of these holly leaves, and then it, it cuts the little leaf veins in the middle of the holly leaves. So cute. Then you could die cut those berries to put with it if you wanted. Um, okay, always clean off your plate before you cut something else. Otherwise, that paper is either going to embed into the next project or down into this plate. Both of those are bad. So scrape that off if any, the paper sticks to it. And then, oh, that came out super easy. But also always clean your dies out. Always. Because you don't want that paper to be in there the next time you die cut anything. Because it will eventually embed in there so deep that it won't die cut. And you might not be able to get it out if you get too much built up in there. So just pop that out. I use a toothpick. And you should be good to go there. And then if there were, I think they all fell out, but if there were any pieces left inside this red happy, I would poke those out with my toothpick as well. You can use your take your pick tool. I just am a wimp and it always stabs me. Okay, so there's all my die cut pieces. Let's put this card together. 
ready. We just need one of these little hollow leaves. But now I have four because I've ran it through twice and only made two cards. I have four or three, I guess. Left over. I don't know. I thought I had a fourth one. It probably stuck to something. Okay. So let me attach my holidays piece to the inside. Your main thing when you start putting your cards together is stop and think, am I going to be wrapping anything around this, tying ribbon around it, whatever. Do I need to do that before I glue it down? Um, I did mean to show y'all this paper. It's the, the heartwarming hugs and it's retiring. Uh, so it's while supplies last and it's just a great all occasion. You can see how well mine has been used. Um, Christmas holiday paper. There's not any specific holiday images. It's just the colors and like stripes and houndstooth and yeah, checks, plaids, dots. It's just great. It's like real red, pear pizzazz, mossy meadow. I think those are the only three colors. Yep. And whisper white, of course. So that's a great paper. Um, I don't know why that just slowed down. I saw that. <laughs> yes, adorable little holly. I agree. Okay, so long story short, I can attach my designer paper because I'm not wrapping anything around it. And then I'm going to peel off the back of the gold happy because I use my adhesive sheets and stick this to the red one. And sometimes, actually a lot of times, when you peel off the backing from the sticky sheets, it will misshape your image. Let me turn this the right way. So what I do is start on one end or the other attaching it, and I just attach a section at a time and reshape it back, if that makes sense. So don't stress out when it's all stretched. I mean, you don't want to rip it, but otherwise, if it's just sort of stretched out of shape, you just place down one piece at a time, whatever the image is. Now, I will use Stampin' Dimensionals on this. A little, oh, those are my big ones, my little minis, my favorite. Get 720 in a pack. And they fit really well in a lot of our images small like this, like on the back of this happy. I just used four. And so I'm going to place happy on the top flap over toward the right. Isn't that cute? And then these two hollies, the one I die cut, they're both die cut, but the one that's die cutting only and the one that is stamped, I'll just use my silicone craft sheet real quick and add some adhesive to those. They're going to get tucked behind the H in happy. Over here to the left, they're going to kind of overlap each other. And then last but not least is a bow. So I have a portion here of some real red sheer ribbon. And let me look it up. It is retiring and it's only $5.95 while supplies last. It's so pretty and it's so vibrant red, like super dark, dark, deep red. So I'm going to make a bunny ear bow. So two bunny ears in one in each finger. I mean, one in each hand. Um, a tail on your left, on my right, it's still attached to the roll. Lots of space in between, and everything's flat. Nothing's been twisted and turned. And then I will take my right hand and cross it over the left, still keeping everything flat. Push that same right one down into the rabbit hole and pull. And then just adjust it and fix it. Meaning make it into a pretty bow. <laughs> and this ribbon is, it because it's so thin... It makes a very small center. It's very like a small knot. So for me, I have to work with it a little more to make it look pretty as a bow, but it's so gorgeous. 
So there's my bow. And then I'll just glue dot this on. Uh, sorry, I think I took that off screen. Just press the embellishment into the dot, pull that off, and then the dot, the bow is going to go down there in the corner of happy, bottom left-hand corner of the H. And there is the finished card. So you still have space to write a note. This is a good one if you just have a little, like, love, Jennifer. <laughs> um, I just think it's cute, though, like a different way to do a card. You could make this top flap longer any length you want if you want more space to write or less exposed you could do lots of stuff it could open sideways um but that is the finished card there and then i will show you the one from the class it used some retired product but it's very similar it has red rhinestones um just the stamped holly leaves but it has the a retired I'm blanking out dazzling be dazzling paper that's what it's called my favorite from celebration and the green paper there is retired so but similar right very similar <laughs> and i added the bow on the new one i like both this was like my favorite card ever with the be dazzling before but i really like this gold so i hope you guys like them both there's the second one Let's see how we're doing thank you pat Thanks, Kathy. Oh, Jackie likes traditional tr Christmas colors. Yes, true, true. Hey, Debbie. Hey, Shirley. Thanks for sharing. Uh, Sarah, I get it. Trying not to create a new wish list for free shipping day. You may not want to watch Facebook Lives. <laughs> but, no, just kidding. Um, yeah, I... Took advantage of the free shipping already today and of course as demonstrators since we can pre-order from the new catalog we can also like if we didn't order anything we can add those or if we haven't had a chance to order yet so lots of perks there as a demo okay last card this is another sort of copy from oops i'm just putting it in the screen from my class that um has passed already so this base is real red, but it's normal, real red. So fold it in half, five and a half by eight and a half, fold it in half with the bone folder. And then on the front is going to be a piece of designer paper. This paper is called Pattern Party, and it's free with a $150 order or party. You don't have to select it, but you can as one of your free gifts. So for example, if you place a $150 order with me right now, not only will you get free shipping, the class packet and the free roll of ribbon and the free dies, you also can select at least $15 in free merchandise from Stampin' Up, which includes this pattern party designer paper, which is a, I'll try to show how thick it is. It's like a double pack. It's huge amount of paper. And one side is black and white, and one side has patterns on it. I mean, they all have patterns, but black and white patterns or colored. And it's just a huge variety of styles and designs. Um, the other side is, a lot of them are bright colors. We also have like flirty flamingo. Look at that. There's like a leopard print. It's so versatile and cute. Um, so you can get that whole pack. Let me grab my other catalog. I can't remember, but the host, it's a host exclusive gift. So you can only get it if you place 150 or more order or host a party of 150 or more. But they are discounted prices. So it's only going to cost you $18 from your host benefit. So you could pay the $3 difference. Um, here's some other examples. The natural texture stamp set only costs 13 of your host dollars. Better Places is only 12 and Prince and Princess is only 10, but it's from your host dollars. So any questions on that, let me know, but you can get that for free. Um, and that's what I use. So it's this white with tiny little black dots that are, um, not reg they're irregularly placed. So it's like you took a 
pen and just started making little dots randomly. Anyway, that's my background, four by five and a four. I have a piece of white to go on the inside just because it's very dark, real red. I'm not stamping on it, but you could, but that's four by five and a four. And I have a piece of basic black to go on the front of the card. I'll give you the measurements in a sec. And then a white piece to go on top of it. Then another piece of white that's the same size to die cut from. And then last but not least, I pre-die cut a label from basic white cardstock from the Hippo and Friends dies, which is a die set in our annual catalog that has tons of label shapes. And that is, um, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but anyway, that's just in the annual catalog. I pre die cut that for my grading. Okay, so this card I'm using Memento Black, Real Red, and Granny Apple Green ink. I'm using the large floral image that's like I described it earlier, but poinsettias, sprigs, berries, um, pine sprigs, holly leaves, all kinds of stuff. One single image. And then I'm using the little, actually, bring this over. I'm using the outline holly leaf stamp that I used earlier. And three dots for the berries. And last but not least, Sending you Christmas cheer. Okay, so this card, what I'm going to do is stamp in Memento Black the flowers first. And uh, so Memento Black is a different, the actual pad is made out of a different material than our other, so you can press nice and firm. So I'll just move this stamp around several places to get lots of good inking and then press firm for several seconds on a nice flat surface. Then that is stamped off now. So for the lighter one on this second piece of white, I need to give you measurements that's going to go on the front of the card. I'm going to stamp this again right in the middle. I do want to center this um, the direction that I want it for the card. Now the purpose of this is after I die cut this out, well, it's too, it's really not that. It's so, well, let me say this properly. After I die cut this out, I'm going to glue it on top of this, so that will be covered up, but I want to stamp some images around it that will show around the die cut image, so that tells me exactly where to stamp. Hopefully that makes sense, and I don't want it a super dark color in case a little piece of it shows under the project. Now, just real quick, these measurements, the white, I just made these the same size, so for less confusion if I mixed up my pieces, the white is three and a fourth by four, and so the black will be three and a half by four and a fourth. And so the piece that I stamped off on will go on my card base. This other one I'm going to color in and die cut out. And I'm just using real red and Granny Apple Green Stampin' Blends. They are alcohol-based markers. They, um, they're alcohol-based, so we stamped with a water-based ink. Memento Black is water-based, so that they won't mix together. And ours come in light and dark, so I'll just do the green first. So I'm gonna add my dark first. You can do this many different ways. Mine is the simplest way. So for these holly leaves, I'm adding dark granny apple green, and I'm just using the fine point. There is a brush tip as well. And then I'll do light on the entire image, including going over where I had dark, which is how you blend it. You can make the um, super dark portion smooth out and just be a shadow by going over and over with the light. It does bleed through to the other side. That's normal. Um, do small sections at a time because this ink can dry and then not blend as well. So I'm doing one leaf at a time. And keep, put your lid back on when you're done so that your marker doesn't dry out. Have you ever used a Sharpie for more than five seconds and left it laying open and now it's dry? These those are alcohol-based, just like these are. So, 
close it up when you're done. If I'm working like this, I'll just slip the lid on without stamping it into place. I think those are the three. I mean, I think there are only three. Oh, but then I also use my light granny apple green. So let me close up my dark for, I don't know what these images are called, but there's these sprigs that have sort of a round, like an oval round thing on it. It's either a bud or a berry or whatever. I colored these in light granny apple green. Then there are also sprigs that have berries on them. So I'll color those with dark real red. And I will color the poinsettias with dark and light real red. Um, also, I have samples to show when I'm finished at how you could stamp. There's one solid poinsettia stamp and it's small, but you can stamp the small, all three of these flowers with it. I'll just show you in my sample um, and then color in the rest. So there is that option as well. Okay, so dark real red for these berries. Again, I'm just using the fine point on all of the images here because of it being a smaller image and that works better for me. <clears throat> if you can control the brush tip, I'm gonna grab my readers. If you can control the brush tip and not go outside of the lines, that's fine. You, To me, you get the same effect. Um, but anyway, so fine point here for me. Just as a side note, like I hear people, other Stampin' Up! demonstrators saying that if they go too close to the edge, they're, this marker bleeds out, but I go right up to the edge and mine don't bleed. So I don't know what is up with that. Like I missed a spot right there. So I'm just going to touch it and I go right up to the edge. It doesn't bleed outside of my images. So I don't know. Okay. So I'm going to add dark real red to this. You know how poinsettias have layers of petals. So the first middle smallest ones. Then in between those where there would be like the meeting of petals. And then in between the next ones. I'm adding dark in all of those spots. And now I'll just go over the whole thing with light. And like I said, you do want to work kind of quickly. So that. The dark doesn't dry too much and not blend as well. But how you blend it is just going over, kind of like little circles, going over where you already colored. You can't go over it too much. It won't break down your paper. Um, we also have a tool called, a, a marker called a color lifter, which you can use to lighten areas. And do other effects. I'm not so great with the color lifter, so I hardly ever use it, but you can. And of course, halfway through this, I was like, maybe I should have pre colored this. This is a lot of coloring, but I did not, so we're just gonna have to listen to me talk <laughs> with all this coloring. <laughs> um, so there's that was the largest flower. Now I'll do the other two smaller ones. But same exact way. They're just smaller flowers. So hopefully they'll be a little faster for me. And by the way, you can go back and add layers and layers. I could go back and add more dark on any of these and then go back over it with the light to blend it. I could just add a touch of dark somewhere and not blend it. Lighten it up with the color lifter, all that stuff. Um, I'm just, this is how I always do it, just the quick version. It's not just because I'm on video. Also, uh, you can over color lift. So it's best to color lift. If this was a lifter, just lighten it a tiny bit, but then walk away, step away, wait, and see how much it lightens before you do that again. Because you can ruin your image by over color lifting, which I've done many times. One of the, this is just me, one of the reasons I don't use it very much because I'm not good with it. I see other people do it and I get inspired, like I could do that, but then I remember 
I can't do that. I'm not good at it. So better if I just do it this way. But that's one thing about Stampin' Up! I'm not artistic. I don't have artistic skills, and I can still do it. So that's encouraging to everyone out there and your friends. So share this video and tell them you can do this too. Look at this girl. Definitely not, which my whole family on my mom's side is artistic. I didn't get that gene or whatever it is. They can draw and paint and all kinds of stuff. I can copy real good on stamping. Okay, so there we go. Isn't that pretty though? Such a pretty image. Words of cheer. I think it's an, in my opinion, it's an overlooked set in this catalog. Whew. Okay, so we'll just die cut that out. Let me do this other stamping real quick before I die cut it. I'll just take it over to my machine and die cut it since you guys have seen that happen already. Um, sending you Christmas cheer just goes right in the middle of this little label die cut in real red. And then as a reminder, I'm going to stamp on this piece where I stamped the flowers off. So this tells me exactly what part will show. So I'm going to stamp in granny, I mean, sorry, yes, in granny apple green, um, the outline holly leaves just a few times around here. So basically three sections, one of them I gave a couple, and then I'll add some of these little berry images just floating around kind of randomly. Let me turn them different directions so it looks a little better there. So just like three of those over by the leaves. And then that gray part will get covered up with the die cut flowers. I actually saw someone else, it might have been on Pinterest or on the demonstrator Facebook group that we have access to do it this way. So that's where I learned that technique. So let me grab this die, which I think is still in here. Is it? Oh, yes. My dies are always kind of a hot mess, but my system works. <laughs> it's fine for me. Um, so I will align this, of course, with the image, the stamped image, and die cut that out real quick. I will step away from the camera. And do it. There it is. And then I'll add Stampin' Dimensional. So this is our last card as a reminder. Say hi. If you're watching replay, you still get to comment and all that. Until I give the prize away, I'm adding just several dimensionals on this since it's large. Until I give the prize away, you can still be entered by saying hi, asking a question, correcting me, <laughs> whatever you want to say on there. Um, so I just want to align this die cut image with the previously stamped image on here. So it allows me to have dimension on that part, but have been easily able to stamp the pieces around it. Then this will go flat, this white large piece, onto the black. Check these comments. Thank you, Cindy. Yeah, oh, Janet, that is true, color lifter. So like if you go outside of the lines or something, you can quickly brush it back in with the color lifter, she says, to erase boo-boos. I'm going to add my designer paper on the front. Um, I'm also not good at that for some reason. It always ends up making a mess. Like I just, that's, that's an example of what we were talking about earlier, how for some reason I can stamp holidays down the side and it's halfway decent, but I can't use the color lifter properly. <laughs> I don't know what my deal is. Maybe I need a class. Um, I'm just putting that white on the inside so I don't forget. And then, oh, I darn it, I did the thing I you're not supposed to do. I'm supposed to put ribbon around this designer paper. Good thing it didn't stick very well. I mean, it'll stick if I press on it, but I'm going to slide my silicone craft sheet under there so I can do this ribbon in a second. But I do want to add the flowers first, flat, so I'm 
adding this black cardstock flat in the top left hand corner with just a little 1 8 inch border on the two sides. I forgot I need ribbon to go across this and I am almost out of this black gingham ribbon. So instead of wrapping it all the way around and tying a bow, and I actually think this ended up looking better anyway, I'm going to cut a little piece of ribbon. I mean, it's not little, it's like over five, it's almost six inches, but I'm gonna cut a piece to go across the front of the designer paper and the bottom of the flowers. And so I'll glue that around the back. So I'll just, I would have added adhesive to the back of my designer paper normally, but now I'm adding it to the ribbon instead. I knew I was gonna forget that when I made this card also for on the video, I knew I would. Okay, so as you can see, hopefully I'm just wrapping a strip of the black and white gingham ribbon around the back. Now I can glue this down all the way, but I would like to add rip adhesive on top of the ribbon on the back. That helps it stay better permanently. If possible. <laughs> um, uh, okay. Like it never happened. Okay. So you should have glued, not glued your designer paper. You should have glued the flowers to the designer paper, then the ribbon, then put this on your card base. Then we will add our greeting on Stampin' Dimensionals. And this is kind of a big label, this Hippo and Prince one. So I do put four. Y'all know me, I usually am cheap with my dimensionals, but four is good to balance it out. And this goes down in the bottom right hand corner and I kind of tucked it under the die cut out flowers. Well, if it fits. Then I'm, and like I said, instead of wrapping this ribbon all the way around and tying a bow, I'm going to do a separate bow. So it's a bunny ear bow from the black and white gingham. So I've already done a bunny ear bow today. So I'll do this one quicker. What time is it? I am going long on this video today for some reason. Not really sure exactly why. Longer than my normal, <laughs> which is still long. But And this uh, is going to be a pretty small bow. So you just keep pulling, pull the tail, pull the tail till you get it the size you want. And then I'll trim. And I want to remind everybody I'm going live tomorrow at 9 a.m. Central right here in this Facebook group with all my new stuff from the holiday catalog. So hopefully you can check that out or check out the replay of that. Mini glue dot that bow. Super cute. So it kind of looks like it was just one piece of ribbon tied around into a bow. And then last but not least, I will add some mini, I mean some uh, red rhinestone basic jewels just like I did the other embellishments earlier with my take your pick tool and I want to use three on the greeting so a couple up here in the top right this is a landscape stock card by the way and then one down here on the bottom left but uh, where the bow doesn't hide it and that's that finished card hope you guys like it this one like I said was inspired by one of my cards from my other class so let me show you that one it was this card very similar but I tried to make it a little different for anyone who had taken that class so I can't remember three and a fourth. Yeah, the white is a little smaller on my new card, the front piece of white, um, which allowed me to scooch it all over to the left and add the greeting. It's anyway, it's just placed differently. And I use different ribbon and different designer paper because this black and white one is no longer available. So um, I actually like the new one better. That black and white gingham, so glad that's carrying over. Um, 
And then let me show you the one I made originally, in case there's any difference there. So I'll show you our three cards from today. And then I just have a couple of additional samples with this bundle. That's why supplies last, as mentioned. <laughs> um, let's see, are those in screen? Sort of. So there's the cards we made today. Those are the ones you have a chance to win by commenting on the video. And don't forget, if you place your online orders, use that host code. Um, you get free shipping today. If it's over 50, you're going to get gifts from me. You can check out my websites. They're across the top here. Um, let me show you a couple of other samples. They are, I believe, all from my the other class I did. So this one I really loved. Um, we stamped that floral image in the top left and bottom right of some white cardstock, colored them in basically the same way I did petal pink berries instead of red berries and like a sea foam on these little other bud things. Um, so it's a softer effect. But anyway, really pretty there. And then this is the one that shows how you can stamp on with that one stamp, the poinsettia. So I used real red and stamped on all three, you can't really see this one, of the poinsettias then colored around it in petal pink. And then the leaves are stamped in. So you can kind of see where I'm off on this one, whether that's my bad stamping or it's a slightly different size. And see here, this is definitely, the solid image is smaller than the leaf, but it looks fine. Um, so you can stamp those in as well, but to me, you kind of still want to color around on the poinsettias. Um, and then I have one here with the cheer die, but in silver and red. Some of these designer papers are retired because it was during celebration. And then the last one is just using the big floral image like I just used, solid, one color. We stamped it in garden green three times, sort of as a background on a card. And then our greeting on a different set of dies there. Here's those little leaf, those holly die um, Images, I forgot I used those, but for the berries, I used the red rhinestones because I was not going to cut out those <laughs> little, um, see how we can put this on here. I was not going to cut out those little circles and have my customers have to keep up with that and all that. So this was that other class. Is that all of them? I think there was a, oh, the other happy one. Not sure where I put it now, right here. This was my other class that I had offered um, a couple of times this season. And thank you to who everyone, to everyone who took that. Okay, so I will, um, just to use my new um, <laughs> software to its extent, um, but I don't want to put my face big screen because I probably look a hot mess right now. But I'll use this little picture in picture to say thank you for watching. I appreciate you guys. Don't forget you can comment to still be entered to win the projects. Um, you know, even if you're watching replay. Thank you, Linda. Thanks for sharing, Tammy. Thanks, Jean. Thank you, Sarah. Hey, Margie. Thank you. Very sweet of you to say that. Tammy, thanks. Thanks, Pat. And Shirley. Uh, Kathy, I think you uh, must be saying this last one is your favorite since... The comment was recent. Um, Linda loves the ribbon. Yes, definitely. Mary Blue. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Lorraine. Thanks, Jackie. Thanks, Cindy. Awesome. I'm sure I'm missing other comments. <laughs> Pat placed a wish list order this morning. So, by the way, my order this morning was class stuff, but then I was like, mm, let me go ahead and get this bundle too. Actually, Pat, you inspired me. I got the ladybug. It's coming because um, Pat made the cutest card with the ladybug bundle that's in our new catalog. Anyway, so I won't have that to show tomorrow because it'll be here Friday. But I did um, I did um, order that. So I ordered a couple of new things with just class stuff today. Free shipping. All right. If y'all have any questions, let me know. Like I said, I'll do my best to catch up 
on comments. I know I didn't say hi to everybody, but thank you. Thank you for being here. Get ready for Christmas. It's coming. Merry Christmas. Um, hopefully these are some good ideas for you today to be able to use inspiration, whether it's colors, layout, if you have this bundle, you can copy, etc. Hey, Joni, no problem. Ooh, thanks for sharing, Sue, with your stamping friends. Um, thank you, Elizabeth. All right, well, everyone have a great day. I'm going to click over here on my little app thing, so hopefully I do.